In this video we'll be building this LED light tube. It's, it's waterproof and works by Wi-Fi. If you don't know anything about electronics, don't worry, I got your back. Anybody better make this project. Now to be honest, I've been working on this project for years. In fact, my first videos were based around this particular project because we've got a trampoline here and the kids, here's a video of it, jump around the trampoline at light and they want it lit up with um, LED lighting. So I've made all sorts of macabre versions of this particular product using hoses, um, this one turns on by sliding this back and forward because uh, moisture is a big problem with this product. Uh, it's got USB connectors and they get wet or damp and moisture and they rust out and you've got to start all over again. So this one I went uh, in a different sort of route and um, actually it's just more simpler than anything I've ever designed before which probably makes it a bit more easier for you guys to make and it's going to be waterproof because it's sealed so it's just a perfect example of keeping it simple stupid so here's a list of things you're going to need to get this made you're going to need an 18650 battery holder and an 18650 18650 is a rechargeable type of battery pretty easy to source also you'll need one of these uh, programming jigs this programs up the controller we're going to use there's other theories the way to do it but this is definitely the easiest way and wherever you buy the controller from they'll almost certainly have this available at the same time talking of controllers here's the controller it's called an esp01 and it's going to be do all the magic with the LEDs. We can't drive the LEDs directly from the SPO1, so we're going to use this little sort of daughter board which plugs into the bottom of it. We can just supply it directly from our battery and it supplies the LEDs directly and provides the correct voltage for the SPO1 to work. For the battery, we want to charge it in situation. We don't want to take it out and put it back in every time, so we've got this little charging circuit. We also want one of these old style lamp switches they've been around for years a row of leds neopixel leds we'll talk a bit more about this when we're building a project this is just a short strip but i'll be using um 30 leds in total or 30 neopixels in total you'll also need an aluminium strip so what i've got here is one meter long it's three millimeters thick and ten millimeters wide hopefully you're going to buy the imperial equivalent you also need like most of my projects two 3d prints one holds all the electronics and one just goes on the end of the pipe to take the end of the NeoPixel strip. The other thing we have is the tube. I think this is a pet tube and it comes with these rubber bungs on the end. All these sizes will be in the show notes. These are all in Imperial so they must be shipped out of the States. So all the Americans out there should be able to get those easy enough for the correct size for the 3D prints as well. And the other thing, or the last thing you want is this tape. This is extreme mounting tape by 3M. Don't cut corners in your double sided tape. Uh, this stuff is good and they're not sponsored but they have um, their product works really well. It's like glue so once it's down nothing's going to move so don't you don't want anything flying around in here so make sure you get some good quality double sided tape. All right let's get on with the build. Okay let's get started. I've already done part of this assembly already. It's pretty straightforward and that's just attaching the boards and the battery holder that we have uh, in the circuit so but uh, down one end it's got a big hole and then you put the charging unit lipo charging board down that end in the middle we just put your battery holder and on the other end we've got the circuit board which holds the uh, ESP01 and you plug the LED lights in and there's a little hole on the end to have the white string come out. As far as wiring is concerned it's pretty straightforward you've got two wires positive and negative coming out of the drive board we just feed them down this wiring tube into the charging unit and you've got a battery plus battery minus out plus and out minus on there it's quite hard to get it wrong but it's not impossible and the other thing is there's the from either the black or the red wire doesn't really matters we feed it into the switch to be able to turn the unit on and off it's pretty important that you don't charge and use the light at the same time because the battery charger can't tell how full the battery is and you could overcharge the battery and have a, um, a fire. So just make sure that you only charge the unit when it's off. So once we're all wired up we're just going to uh, add this aluminium rod to the base of the uh, board holder like this, line it up and with our double sided tape stick that down. So the LED strip will usually come with some paper backing on it, just peel that off to reveal the double sided tape and then you want to get the LED as close as possible to the end of the um, board holder so you get the most sort of brightness across the length of the of the rod. Once it's done you'll notice at the other end 
is a bit hanging off if you've got a one meter rod and it was this one is four it keeps the pipe centered and it's got a channel there for the end of the aluminum rod to, to slide into okay so we're almost there we've got our lamp pretty much fully assembled uh, the next thing we need to do is get the controller up and running so for the controller we're going to use a firmware called WLED it is everything you could ever need to drive this light sort of presets or different patterns um, and different methods to connect to the light through Google Assistant, Alexia, uh, all sorts of different things. But to do this, uh, I'm not going to cover it on this video, but I do have a video already available which will be up here or up here, which steps you through programming this uh, device. It's pretty straightforward as long as you've got the jig and, and this, that video will cover everything step by step. So it'll be a piece of cake and once you've done that, uh, pop back and we'll continue. Welcome back. That wasn't so hard, was it? So now we've got this programmed. We're just going to plug it into its holder and put our battery in and just see what happens. Okay, so if you watch the uh, ESP01 programming video, what's going to happen next is not going to be too much of a surprise. We turn it on and it goes orange. It's quite hard. The camera struggles with the exposure, but these are all lit up orange. Uh, and that's the default WLED configuration for what it does. So we know it's working. Once we add a little bit, we've got the app, so we can go through and change all the colours and everything to, um, maybe it'll come up better, red, yellow, green, and of course all the different effects work out of the box. So we know it's working, so we'll put it in its tube. So let's turn off the big light so we can see what's happening with this a little bit easier. Uh, it's still sort of struggling. But it's pretty bright at night and without a camera. Um, so you, you might think that's good enough, but it would be nice if we didn't see each individual pixel. So we need to somehow diffuse it so they all blend in together. And for that, uh, I haven't told you what you needed because you should probably already have it. Uh, it's baking paper. So this might be called something else where you're from. Uh, we call it baking paper. It could be parchment paper. I'm not too sure, but basically, we're just going to roll this around. We're going to cut the length. So you want to measure out the inside length from each end of the lamp. Cut your baking paper that length and then roll it up and put it in the tube so the paper sits between those two white end pieces. You don't want them going over because these are such a tight fit, it just rips the paper. But if it's sitting in between, it can't go anywhere. Well, you've made it to the end, you should totally subscribe. I've got this one all done, I've just got another 10 to go because there's 12 poles on a trampoline. So where to from here? Well, I've made a whole series of videos, which should be here, hopefully, of configuring this light for different services. Google Assistant, DMX, Adafruit, IO, um, anything really there's just so many ways you can make these lights work you can get them to dance together you can get them to move with sound all sorts of different things so definitely check out those uh, that playlist and thanks for watching